Now, another really important way that industry needs to manufacture credibility, in addition to paying off experts, is by creating front groups. And front groups are extremely important and powerful, and these are just three examples. So the Center for Consumer Freedom, and these are, you know, some tip-offs are the words that they use. Consumers and freedom, it's the all-American way. If you missed that, there's a little flag in their logo to show you how patriotic they are. This next group, International Food Information Council. Wow, council, that sounds so important, could be part of the federal government. Many people often think that they are. The third group is the U.S. Farmers and Ranchers Alliance. Again, the word alliance sounds all warm and fuzzy, must be a good thing. Well, in fact, each of these three groups is funded by a different sector of the food industry. And it's really important to know who these groups are when you see them showing up in various ways. So they will either take out ads, or they will write up ads, or they will hire experts who will speak on their behalf. And the name of the game here is to control the public discourse. PR is what these groups do, and they do it extremely effectively. The use of front groups also plays out very um, notably at the local level during individual policy debates. So you might recall also last fall um, was in Richmond, California, a soda tax initiative. Okay, so the front group that formed there was called Community Coalition Against Beverage Taxes. Keyword, community, right? Because we want to make sure that we understand the community is against this, this initiative. Related to that is the tactic of putting a small business person out in front. So industry took out these billboards, having a local business person saying, claiming that the soda tax would hurt his small business, and then playing the race card. That was another issue that came up in Richmond. Now, obviously, Coke and Pepsi can't put their name on these billboards, right? You couldn't have a coalition called the Coca-Cola Coalition Against Beverage Taxes, because that just wouldn't fly. So instead, they fund these local sounding groups to do their bidding. Similarly, in New York City, also with the soda industry, we had New Yorkers for beverage choices, right? Because Coke and Pepsi for beverage choices wouldn't fly. The idea is to put the individual, the consumer, the small business person, the sympathetic person out in front carrying the message because those are the groups that have credibility. And in this case, the message on the t-shirt is, I picked out my beverage all by myself, another way of discrediting government, infantilizing um, the idea of government, you know, doing anything to try and fix this problem. 